Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another glorious day here on the Kona Beach. And Lord, we pray now that you would send that blowing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, just as we feel that breeze coming in off the ocean, Lord, that you would refresh us and re- rejuvenate our souls, Lord, and, and draw us ever closer to you. Help us to understand you more clearly this day as we study your word. We pray that you'd give Pastor Izzy a special anointing to, uh, to teach the sheep that we are. But Lord, uh, we just ask for you to bless this time in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, guys. Would you turn in your Bibles to Romans 16? I can't believe it. We're to the end of the book of Romans today. This has been a... a, a, My wife says I should call the radio ministry inching through the word, like a little inchworm instead, of because I don't cover that much at a time. But today, I want to try to cover the whole chapter of chapter 16, so don't go in shock, okay? Just giving you a heads up. But uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit more of an overview instead of an in-depth verse by verse because there are so many names mentioned in this uh, chapter that if I did the background to each one of the ones that we do have uh, some of the things about in the scripture, we could be here till, well, you know, the sun sets. And uh, there, there's a lot of cool stuff in this chapter. But, but it'll, today we're just going to set, a, I, I just want to show you something maybe in the bigger picture and, you know, sometimes when we're learning the Word of God, you have to start with a framework. You need to learn the, the big picture of salvation, what God has for us, and then you can start zeroing in right on the finer points. And, and this will be one of those studies that helps you learn something that you can, a framework, that you can put the little details, the fine details of grace into this. But, but you need to know the bigger picture. Like Paul is going to conclude, he's wrapping up the letter here of, of Romans and he's, he, in chapter 16, we come to his, his final points that he's going to make. And I, it's, not, it's not as, um, how do I say, it, it's in a way that shows something that I think some people gloss over because they see a bunch of names and they, they kind of, you know, speed read and get through that. Uh, how you can speed read all these names, I don't know because they're hard enough to pronounce when you go slow. But uh, I'll do my best for you. Let's start off in Romans 16 this morning. In verse 1 we read, it says, And I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church which is at Centuria. So Paul is um, writing to the church at Rome, and he's going to begin to kind of send his salutations and greetings to the people there. Now, had Paul ever been to Rome when he wrote this letter? Does anyone remember the, the timeline we went over? No, he hasn't been there yet. He's going to get to go. He has a heart to go, and he thinks he's going to go there as he's on his way to Spain, and he's just going to drop in, visit them, be helped and encouraged by their faith and encourage their faith. And and he's like, I can't wait to see you. He doesn't know that he's going to, he said, but I have to go to Jerusalem first and drop off a love gift from the guys there over in uh, Macedonia and Achaia. They had, they had heard this, the, the saints in Jerusalem were suffering. Remember, in, in the day of Jesus, the Roman Empire was in charge, and they began to just persecute the Christian way because they were saying that there was a king of kings, a lord of lords, above all lords, this one Jesus, this Messiah. Now, that doesn't go over with Roman megalomania, where, where you know, these guys like to... You, you guys have seen the stories, right, where they show the... the Emperor, you know, Nero or, or those guys, they're just like, they want everyone to fall down and worship them. And to say that there's a higher king than, than, the, than their kingdom. This, you know, remember Herod, when the Magi appeared, they said, uh, where's he who is born king of the Jews? At, we study this at Christmas time, right? At the, at the birth of Jesus and the, and, the, and the Magi appear and they're like, where's the king of the Jews? And, and he goes, uh, don't know. So he, he, has the, he has the spiritual guys say, where does the scripture say the king of the Jews is to be born? And they, you know, they knew the scripture. They went and said, well, it says you, O Bethlehem, least among the clans, you're going to be the place that is, is, is the one that is chosen by God. And in Hebrew, Beth is house, Leh is of, and Hem is bread. 
the house of bread. Now, I love this because Jesus, when he came, he said, I am the bread of life, which has come down from heaven. But the bread of life was born, just by coincidence, in the house of bread. So it's not coincidence at all. The Lord knew. But when Herod found that out from his religious fellows, he, what do you say to the Magi? Hey, go find this one, this, this one born king of the Jews, and, and come and tell me where he is that I might come and what? And worship him. Who thinks he wanted to go worship? Anyone? No, he wanted to go kill. And when he found out that the, the, the Lord warned the Magi not to return to Herod, go a different way, and they did. They departed. And after they departed and Herod found out that they weren't coming back, he sent his fellows and said, hey, wait a minute, when did that star appear? About two years ago. Kill every baby two years and younger. Wipe out every male. I, I, just in case, I'm not going to, but the, but the Lord had sent to Joseph a warning and said, take now, flee, take your family and flee. And, he, and the one thing I love about Joseph in the Bible is he obeyed the Lord. Lord told him to do it. He didn't say, but I don't get it, Lord, or I don't understand, or this is going to be inconvenient. I'm going to have to give up my house. I'm going to have to, you know, uproot. And God said, do it, and he did it. To me, that, that's one of the things that, you know, I have found in, in our Christian experience, we kind of overcomplicated the gospel a bit. Really, it comes down to a real simple thing. When God puts that that direction to you to do something, are we the people that say, Lord, if you say to do it, I'll do it. You know, it, I, when I came here, by the way, we're almost to our 25th anniversary of doing church here. My wife and I came here 25 years ago. Fourth of July, this Fourth of July marks 25 years for us. And I go, you know, I, I had a man show up about 10 years into us doing church here, and he he said, I'd like to take you to lunch and ask how you came to be the pastor here. <laughs> okay, free lunch, I'll go. <laughs> so I go to lunch with this fellow, and he's, he says he was a pastor. And he formerly had pastored different fellowships. And, and so I was like, okay, you know. And so he, he asked me to share my testimony, what the Lord did to bring me here. And I said, Honestly, in, in, in a nutshell, the Lord had this guy come up to me who's born and raised in Hilo, Wally Takaki, and he pointed in my chest and said, you have to go to the Big Island and share the gospel. You're laid back. They'll, they'll receive it from you. You go. You have to. And I, I walked away from Wally going, Lord, what's wrong with Wally? He would And I remember saying this to the Lord now. I still remember to this day what I said. I said, Lord, he's so polite. He wouldn't tell a fly to get off his hamburger at a picnic. And he's telling me to go to Hawaii. Like, it's so out of character, Lord. I just don't get it. And the Lord goes, it isn't him, dummy. It's me. And right there, clear as a bell, I knew I was supposed to go. So I shared that with the man at the, di at the, at the supper together. And, and he says, well, I know that you're the right man for the job. And I said, why is that? Here's this pastor who's pastored multiple works. And he says, I know you're the right man for the job. I said, why? He says, because God told you and you obeyed. I said, okay, that's, that's, yeah, that's how it works. And he goes, he goes, but God told me first. I just didn't do it. And ever since then, he's caused me trouble. Wanting to take, take the church over. And I, I just go, Lord, why didn't he... I mean, he knows, he knows the principle. When the Lord tells you to do something, you got to do it. And he even commended me for doing it, and yet is remiss that he didn't do it. Now, why? You know, I don't, I don't, I hope that by God's grace, I can be the pastor that shows you the example of do as I do, not do as I say, not as I do. I don't. I always was turned off by those guys that would preach, you know, something and then not live it. The, the, to me, that's true hypocrisy. The guys that are, are telling you to, to forgive and then they, they walk around in unforgiveness. Or they tell you to love and they, and they hate. You know, th that's not what it's about. 
is a really simple thing. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.